I left Mott Green and his tiny chocolate factory and headed across the island, hoping to see one of the rarest sights in the natural world. Nicholas Winkler runs the Ocean Spirits Project, set up to save one of the most endangered species in the world, the leatherback turtle. They're the big champions of the, of the turtle world, uh, and, and everybody knows they are, but they are most in danger, aren't they? They're, um, they're critically endangered. It's in a region of 125,000 leatherbacks left in the world, which means they're um, pretty much one, one step away from extinction in the wild. Okay. Leatherback turtles return to Leverer Beach to lay their eggs because this is where most of them were born. Nicholas and his colleague Stephanie Clark patrol the beach to make sure the turtles can lay their eggs in peace and safety. Stephanie, what's it like to watch the turtles come up? It's amazing. The first turtle I saw was just the sheer size of the, of how, the how leatherbacks. Big? Just, oh, I don't know about, about yeah. that, maybe bigger. Yes, <laughs> some can weigh a ton. Yes, uh, yeah. 160 centimetres, centimetres yeah. in length. And they come all the way from temperate countries, yeah. don't they? Yeah. The metal tags we put on the rear end of the flippers we've been, have been sent back to us from Canada, from the US, Trinidad, St. Vincent. So they're very long distance travelers, aren't they're they? They're extremely long distance travelers. They'll travel across the Atlantic and, you know, over, sometimes it takes them two years to come back. The beach was very quiet that afternoon because the leatherbacks only come to lay their eggs at night. We would have to wait. Nicholas and Stephanie took me back to their rented house, where volunteers from many countries of the world live and work together and take turns in patrolling the beach. And what's this experience been like for you? Amazing. Um, yeah, definitely just seeing the leatherbacks first come up onto the beach. I mean, it was my first time ever seeing a leatherback, so being able to, to be there and see, you know, this amazing creature coming out of the water, and it's just so large. I mean, they've been around for millions and millions of years. Th that's right. There's almost a sense in which you're watching a prehistoric ritual, isn't there? Definitely. I mean, they've been around since the dinosaurs, so it's, it's amazing to sort of think about that longevity. Well, let's hope we see some tonight, eh? After dinner, I watched Mike Williamson and Kester Charles check the tags which they attach to the leatherbacks to track these very vulnerable creatures. An adult turtle is worth about 300 pounds to a poacher. Are there Grenadians who still believe that turtles have mythical qualities, especially the leatherbacks? You have some Grenadians that still believe, especially the older folks, yeah. still believe that the eggs are for special reason yeah. in, into the whatever yeah. they believe. Some of them believe that you give them a, make them quite strong. Some yeah. of them use it for like sexual reasons. So <laughs> it's, rich, it's really funny. As night fell, we headed to the beach to see the turtles which had traveled hundreds, in some cases thousands of miles, to get here. I hope we see some turtles. I think we should. Uh, the question is when. <laughs> Lights would scare the turtles away, so we used special night vision cameras. Steph, it's a waiting game now, isn't it? Yes, it is. We just have to have to wait and see. It could be hours, it could be 10 minutes, but yeah, just wait and see. I stood there on an empty beach in the dead of night, hoping that the critically endangered leatherbacks would not disappoint us. After four hours, a sighting. Hey, Mike, can you hear me over? It's now almost midnight, and apparently, a couple of turtles have just come up along the beach. See that shadow there? Yes. If you go up a little bit, you see a dark spot. It might be very hard to make out. Yeah. She's actually facing directly at you right now. Gosh, it's huge. <laughs> My goodness. It's enormous, and she's actually dig digging the crater, isn't she? The turtles, instinctively aware of the dangers from predators and poachers, come ashore for as short a time as possible. A turtle can lay over a hundred eggs each night, which they then carefully conceal in the sand. Only one in every thousand eggs will ever produce an adult turtle, so during the laying period, the turtles return to the beach every nine or ten days to lay as many eggs as possible. I can't believe the effort she has to make to do this, though. It's absolutely astonishing just watching this entire process. It never gets boring. <laughs> no, I'm sure not. As Nick holds the flipper bag that she's using to protect her egg chamber, yeah. I'm going to um, stick my gloved hand just under the cloaca and then kind of gently catch them as they fall into the egg chamber and um, count them. Peering into the pitch black darkness, I was able to share with the volunteers this memorable sight, the propagation of a species. 
fair size, aren't they? But half a dozen so far. The volunteers take the eggs to a safer part of the beach and rebury them to try to enhance their chances of hatching. How many do you think, Nick? Um, anywhere from about 50 to about 120. Looks as though she's almost done, yes? Yeah, she'll cover and then before she gets back to the sea, she'll do what is known as camouflaging. Oh, yes. Where it's spreading all that sand around, um, where it gets really messy. Um, it's to confuse any possible predators. Yeah. It's extraordinary. She's still covering up, thinking her eggs are there. There she goes. Then, with deliberate majesty, the leatherback returns to the waters. She will return, continuing this timeless ritual to ensure the preservation of her species.